Hi. Creativity is something which is at the centre of my life because my primary skill is a musician and a composer and a producer. At certain times I'm asked to be a media producer and at other times I might engage in teaching um, what I know um, to, to children or to adults. Somewhere within my journey, I've been asked by government departments and companies and social enterprises and charities to see if I could lend what I know, um, transfer your skills to their world. Interesting thing about creativity and emergence is that um, whilst we may have the facility to analyse and to understand the grammar and the rhetoric to express an idea, um, too often we're not initially close to the origin of an idea. And the idea of being original in any art form, I would suggest, isn't necessarily the way that um, the idea is expressed, although that is a great part of it, but it's about can you get to the DNA, the initial basis of an idea. When I play the piano, Sometimes I sit and something seems to flow through me. Sometimes I would record it and I'd listen back to it and then I would analyse what I did. And then I would structure um, what came through my imagination. The interesting thing about how we're often taught um, in music is to be great exponents of existing works of art. So everybody already knows how it goes, it's already written, the script is there to follow. You just need to execute that very well. People would often say in the arts that you cannot teach creativity, that you can give them the rudiments of how to, how to interpret. I somehow beg to differ with that idea. And um, in my musical development and through schooling, there was often times where ideas was coming out of me and my teachers were quite baffled because it was things they hadn't taught me yet, but somehow it was flowing through. And I didn't understand it, and neither did they. But that made me curious about where ideas come from and what they're really trying to express and what their function is in society. In order to innovate, I would suggest it's important to understand what it is you're innovating. In the 19th century, we had a whole wave of social engineers who were very clear about what they were trying to originate. Many of them, like the Thomas Malthuses of this world, um, drew on Plato's Republic, the idea about how you design civilizations how the mind must be organized in order for that civilization to run smoothly. What might be the dissonant elements um, of the mind, which should be perhaps stamped out? In his Republic, music was an important thing to be controlled because music could be a channel that could open people to ideas which are outside the canon. And that was seen, deemed as dangerous to have minds which are too opened and not organized and controlled. The Industrial Revolution um, was a great period in British history. A uh, great exhibition of 1851, about 91 patents were released to the world for engineering. It was very clear uh, where the division of labor and specialization in the industrial complex would lead Britain. So therefore, an education system appropriated from the Prussian PhD system was brought into England and also into America. It was a military system to help people organize themselves in rank and file and how to follow orders and how to do their own prescribed task within a production line. It was not necessary for everyone to understand the great architecture of an idea or a social function, but simply to be proficient in their little bit. We've been educating like this for quite a long time now. And at one point it made sense because we had lots of factories which would employ people doing lots of menial tasks where all we needed to do was to do their little bit in the production line. 
In music, if you're a composer, people treat you like you're some kind of mysterious god figure, that you, are, you have a, a direct la line to the muse. And then the interpreters, well, you have the conductor who interprets the mysteries of the score, which is now the doctrine. And the musicians are executing this perfectly in an organized fashion. And it works, and it creates great music. But there are many other ways for us to organize and express. But with this thing about creativity and innovation, how many people have been educated in to what social design means and what social engineering means? How many of the fundamental ideologies that came out of this um, post-enlightenment period uh, do many people understand how to break down and to recreate anew, to disagree with in a very articulate fashion? and to be able to reinvent, to be able to be prescriptive to change. I talk about emergence from a standpoint of how something comes forth to us. I'd use the word epistemology, the knowledge of wisdom. Linguistics is the way that we express epistemology. Sometimes, Epistemology has to create its own language in order to make itself manifest. So to be able to create the information, the grammar, the logic, logic and rhetoric is, I think, fundamental to creativity and innovation. Because unless we really understand the very basis of what it is we're innovating, I don't think we're going to do a really effective job. For instance, the way we learn and the way we teach is now being radically transformed, at least our understanding is, through cognitive linguistics and neuroscience. We understand now that activities which promote um, neural networks are a basis for the brain and the mind and consciousness to develop. So surely education is therefore about educating um, the intelligence from perspectives where we can have intersections at a place like this between social biology, neuro linguistics, cognitive psychology. But how many of those conversations are going on? Are we still very much in a division of labor specialization camp? Specialization is important, but we're also in an age of networking ideas. In the emergent civilization, more and more, it's heartening to see that there are corporations that are understanding that they need to evolve, that the economic idea that they had of capitalism, where you could externalize social, environmental, and human deficits, um, and sometimes pass those on to the public purse to look after, uh, that we could plunder the earth, and that we could plunder particular parts of the human mind for only that bit of intelligence we need for them to be productive in the workplace. There is a shift where people are recognizing um, holistic thinking and how that can be applied into system. But it means that the creator and the innovator needs to understand um, the transitory measures of where we are presently, how we got there, and where we need to be getting. Are we truly harnessing the full potential of the human mind and our talents? With music and entertainment, the et etymology of entertainment is to translates loosely into entering people into a state of containment. We call that suspension of disbelief now. And the user has given their permission to thrill me, take me on a journey, do what you will. Which means that a designer can then look at what's happening in the nervous system. How can I manipulate that? How can I manipulate fear and all the various emotional responses? How can I create excitement? And there is a permission between the producer and the consumer and for them to get exactly what they, what they want. But in order to bring people into states of containment, which they may find stimulating and pleasurable, uh, means that we can open ourselves to a whole plethora of intersections of knowledge, which are contained in a university such as this, to help us do that more intentionally are more accurate. Some people might say that is manipulation. But if the consumer has given the producer permission to do so for a particular period of time, that is part of the 
um, the relationship, as it were. We're in an age now where the new term, prosumer, has been invented because the gap between the producer and the consumer is now shortening. In fact, people who produce also consume. Uh, sometimes the user says, well, that's rubbish. You should have done this and this and this and this, like in video games. Bring the children in to test it, and they'll tell the adults, this is the better way to design the game. The gap between a producer and a consumer is, is getting smaller and smaller, which means that the creator and the innovator needs to have a holistic understanding of what the design is for. So as I say, from the beginning, once upon a time, there were people who dared to dream big enough to see themselves as some sorts of uh, architects of civilization. It sounds terribly grandiose. But it was a few people that did that, sometimes up to 3% of a population. I'm envisioning uh, our potential now, in our networking information age, to be able to uh, all of us be participatory in the, in, in the whole pro process of creating civilization, creating our communities in a very active and responsive way. But it means that we have to do so with the same mindfulness, daring, substance, and intellectual rigor, and that the imagination that we have and the eureka moments um, somehow come from a, an intentional space from the disciplined imagination that applies creativity prescriptively for how we want to evolve. So I'm proposing that we are witnessing uh, a civilization emergence, a way where a critical mass of early adopters and creative innovators can help shift paradigms and accelerate how that happens. In order for that to happen, for us who have been educated academically, we need to also recognize that there are other parts of our consciousness and our intelligence that we need to exercise outside of that, um, outside of the analytical problem-solving mind and allow a translation between our stimulated imagination, our filius, our emotional intelligence. And then how do we translate that into a, a post-rationalized, systematic, applicable order that can help us to be much more pointed and deliberate and responsive to the world and civilization which we want to emerge. We are in an age of emergence and we are its agents. Thank you very much. <laughs>